chapter 4, 21 parshas Nasa. Vaida Vera Dinam Moshe Mor. God spoke to Moshe saying, Nasoas Rosh, Beneger Shon Gam Haim, Mavesa Vasama Mishpachosam. Let me tell you a story. I uh, just tell you anything. Uh, oh, first of all, my friend texted me. Uh, about, I said, well, we have to bring the Olas Re'iyah when the base of is built tonight. So he says, it's a machokas in Chagiga, whether these carbonos are an obligation in and of themselves, I guess, or are they merely tashlumen of the day of the Yom Tov? So if these carbonos are an obligation in and of themselves, he's not writing down, I'm just saying, I'm thinking it through. If these carbonos are an obligation in and of themselves, then we have to bring it. Oh, wait, well, which way would we go? If they're tashlumen of the Yom Tov, they're making up for the yantif. Then, then mm-hmm. since the yantif uh, w- it was pushed off on the yantif, you couldn't do it, then you would lose the opportunity now. But if you say they're carbon in and of themselves, then you'd have to bring it if the, if the, when the basic mix is still night. Right, that's, and he just texted me that. Okay, fine, good. But yeah, it's good to have a friend like this. Okay, so now I'll tell you afterwards a powerful story. You want to, you want to, the powerful story is, I'll just tell you, I, I called my friend t- today and he was, I said, I'm going to Englewood, I'm going to dive with you. He said, I just want to tell you what happened to me on Shavuos. He said, on Arab Shavuos, he's running late and he's getting home and it's just an hour before, uh, or maybe an hour and a half before Yom Tif. And he sees this Hasidic family walking on the side of the road with a police car walking in front of them. And he sees the, the woman is crying and a bunch of kids. He says, what's going on? He said, they just impounded our car. We're supposed to be upstate for Yantif. We don't know what we're going to do. He says, get in, get in my car. They said, what are we going? He says, get in my car. They don't know them. He says, we don't know you. He says, you're a Jew, I'm a Jew. We know each other. They jumped in his car. He says, quickly drive me to my house. Got into my house. He jumped out. He says, bring it back. Sunday, go. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it back Sunday, go. <laughs> and that's the true story. And then he sent me a video of the guy coming. Did you check on Sunday? Yeah, they, I checked today. The guy brought back the car. All right. Anyway, it says, Naso es Rosh Bnei Gershon Gam Haim. He says, take a census of the sons of Gershon. Gam Haim will base up with some and Mishpach Take a census of all the people from the Gershon family which is one of the families from the tribe of Levi, um, each one according to their families. Raj, she says, now, so as Rosh B'nei Kershon Gam Haim, Kamosha Tzivisicha, just like I commanded you, Abbe Kahas, the Rose Kama Yesh Sheigu Kavo, that we want to see how many of them have reached the age of service. Iben Shoshim Shana Vamala, Vaben Chamishim Shana Tefkorosam, from 30 to 50, Kavo, it's what's a Vala, Voda Voda Bohomoy. Okay, whoever is ready to serve. So, which is in the Levites, 25 to 50. In the regular Israelites, it's 20 to 60. Zot avodas mishpachos gershuni avodum This is what the Gershoni family, Gershunis, have to do with their work and their carrying. They have to lift the curtains of the Mishkan and the Omoed. The coverings and the tachash covering that's above it, and the screen of the entrance to the omoed. What does this mean, Rashi says? As Yeriosa Mishkan, the panels of the Mishkan, Ezer Atachtonot. These are the 10 lower panels. So, what does this mean? So, the, there were different, la- there were three layers of panels covering the Mishkan. So the lower panels were called the Uriota Mishkan. These were goat skins. And the this Omoed, and they covered the Mishkan and the tent. Mirseyu, what's the difference between the Mishkan and the Omoed? Rashi says, Uriota Mishkan, this Omoed, these are, um, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let's see earlier citation. Ah, there's a footnote here. What's the difference between the Mishkan and the Omoed? So they have a footnote back in the beginning of our Midbar. The word Mishkan can mean the tabernacle. 
That was the sanctuary. And it could also mean the covering over the tabernacle that served as the roof. So the word OL is used for both the tent or the tabernacle and the covering of the goat's hair that lay over the Mishkan. So the Mishkan is the first roof covering and the OL can be the second covering. So this is a very important point because the word Mishkan and Omoed mean different things in different places in the Torah. And that can be very, very confusing. So we have to be aware of that. Okay, that's Omoed. This is the covering over the Mishkan, over, uh, covering over the, the goat panel. So these are the goat skins, which are made as a covering over the Mishkan. So the Mishkan was the Mishkan was the first la- layer, um, which was which was different yarns, and then the omoed is made out of the goat skins. So the riota Mishkan and the omoed mechseyo, and then on top of that there was the mechseya tachash. So. Okay, it's a little confusing because you say it's covering and then the tachash covering, asherom oav milamala, the, the omoed, it's cover, and then the cover on top of which will be the tachash, and then masach, pasach, omoed. But that would mean four coverings, but there's only three coverings on the Mishkan. So this is very confusing. Well, Stantol has four, and it's interesting because the, the red ram skin covering are the ones that are tethered down. Right, so let me just read the Rashi's comment, the footnote here, because the footnote addresses this. The footnote here is trying to help us make sense of this. He says, in Rashi's comments to chapter 3, verse 25 above, Rashi said that the cover, Mechseyu, includes both the ram skins and the tachash skins, which would mean that it's one cover, i.e. they both make up the third covering, the third roof. The ram skins and the, and the tachash skin, which could be the unicorn skins or the seal or the dudong. So that uh, earlier Rashi saying refers to both. But however, 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 our verse tells us that the ram skins and the tachash skins are not the same, that they're, they're carried separately. So, so, so that makes it confusing here. Yeah, if they were sewn together, but here Rashi says that they're carried separately, which means they would have been untied. It's somewhat problematic. It's somewhat difficult for me to understand. But they're, but they're, they're both tethered to the, I can't tell, to the ground, like the ten pin. Yeah. So, so it depends which version of Rashi. In the earlier version of Rashi, it talks about ramskins and tachash skins jointly covering the tabernacle with the tachash skins covering the ramskins completely. But our verse says that they're separate. Okay, look, I don't know. So then it says, Masach Pasach, this is the Vilona Mizrahi, this is the Eastern curtain. And then what else are they carrying? That's Kaleach the curtains of the courtyard, that's Masach, Pesach, Sharach, Hatzer, and the opening, Ves Masach, the screen, at the opening to the entrance into the courtyard, Asher HaMeshkan, Baal Mizbech Seviv, that were over the courtyard and the altar around them. Ves Meisrayim, their robes, Ves Kol Kulei Avod and all their utensils, Ves Kol Asher Yaseu Ha'em, Avadu, everything that's done to them, and they shall serve. So let's see what Rashi says this is. Asher HaMeshkan, Komar, the curtains and the screen of the courtyard. Which screen and protect the Mishkan and the copper altar around them. But again here, Rashi seems to be not exact because these were not over the courtyard. There was nothing over the courtyard. And there were, and we've already said the stuff that was the curtains that were over the Mishkan. So it's a, it means a, it really means around. And everything that's done to them. Kitar Gumo. The Yat called Masar Wahon. And everything that shall be handed over to them with Ne Gershon. Okay, so then the verse states, Api Aron Vanav. 
Aaron and his son should oversee this. Tia Koa Vadas, Peniago Shunil, Koma Sam, Koma the Sam, Skaratem, Oem, and Mishmer says Koma Sam. Aaron and his son should be in charge of all the service. Uh, for all their carryings and their work, ufkaratem olam b'meshmeret, and so they shall, and you shall charge them with this, with this guardianship, and as komasam all their carryings. What does Rashi say? Al pi Aaron uvanav beizu me abanim memuna olam. Which son of Aaron is in charge? And then it says biyadi tamar ben Aaron akoyin. That's verse twenty-eight. Okay, this is the service of mishpachas pnei goroshni ba olmoed mishmartam biyadi tamar ben Aaron akoyin. Verse 29, uh, 29, 30, 31 is B'nai Mirari, is the, the third family. We've already done Gerishon and Kaz, is the third Levitical family, the Mirari family, Lubeis Abbasam, Tifkot Abbasam, from again, we bench Lashim Shanaf, from 30 to 50, from 30 to 50 years old. Ad Ben Hamishim Shanaf, Tifkadim, Kobal, Tzavah, Avodah, Sabodah, Salamoy, from 30 to 50. So, so that's what it is. Also, the garrison went from 30 to 50, the Gershuni. This is their guardianship. What they're responsible to do is the planks, the brichav, the bars, the amudav, the pillars, the and the sockets. Why is it 30 to 50? I mean, in the census, they. 20 to 60. Right. So the Levites. You know they had to be they had to carry I guess uh, and there Rashi discusses that earlier I forget the exact answer now but Rashi said why the Levites are from thirty um, Rashi says yeah they have to go and they study exactly Jeff so he says they have to be fit for the work of carrying and that's from the age of thirty until fifty and less than thirty they're not fully strong and from fifty your strength is diminishing. That's what Rashi said earlier. So, what are these your pegs and the ropes? We say those some may say him show amudim of the courtyard pillars. Jeff, you got a nice tan over Shmuel. We see beautiful. Uh, oh, it's not from. Uh, uh, okay, fine. I'm just teasing you, Jeff. You're just turning red. That's all. It is. We say those some may say him of the. Of the pillars, Shara Yistosu may sreg akoyim for the pegs and the ropes of the curtains, Bemasa Bene Gershon are you. Those were the Gershuni. We say to Samu may sreem are you a Rios Ukayim. There were pegs and ropes for the curtains. And so here we're talking about of the pegs and the ropes of the pillars. Milamata, and these were. They don't want the pillars to, to fly away. And, and so they're ones for the current so that they don't fly away. And these are the Mesedos and Mesraim, Ayu Amudim. And these were for the pillars, Saviv, with slow spam Akwaim, to hang the curtains around the pillars, Bisvatam al Yona, and they hung from the upper edge, Bikun Sots, Kunda Sin, with poles and rods. As it's taught in Malachas Amishkan, Malachas well, HaMishkan is a collection of brises which deal with the construction of the Mishkan. Now, we're going to skip a little bit because there's no Rajis for the next uh, 20 so verses until we get to verse 47. And the verse tells us, but the parish does not so, it has the most verses of any portion that is uh, read by itself. There are other portions when they're read together, which are greater than it, like Matos Mase, Vayako Pekude. But Parashas Nase is the biggest single portion. So we, if there's no Rashi, we're going to jump. In verse 47, we bench Shlo Shem Shana Vamala, Vaad Ben Chami Shem Shana from 30 to 50, Koaba, Avoda Avodas, Avoda, Avodas, Mosab, or Moe. Okay, this is very interesting. Up until now, we've said only the work of carrying, but now there is avodas avoda, the service of a service. What's the service of a service? Does Rabbi Steinsaltz tell us anything? What's the service of a service? Surashi says, here's what this is. Hu ashir. This is to sing. That was a service in the temple. You had to sing. You had to sing. Bemil, bem tzilotayim. With symbols and harps, which is a service for another service. 
It is the service of the Levites which accompanies the sacrificial service of the Kohanim. The service of the Levites which accompanies the sacrificial service of the Kohanim. So that's okay. <laughs> Avodas, avoda? yeah. I don't remember. It is the first time. I think that the first time it appears because that's why Rashi has to explain it here. No. Uh, we've had Avodas Masa. Yeah, so the, avod- the difference is the Avodas Avoda Rashi is saying is a service to aid another service as opposed to the Avodas Masa, which is itself the service, the service of carrying. Bavodas Masa Kamashmo, as it sounds. Verse 48. So there were how many? 8,580 Levites who were working in the temple, in the Mishkan. <laughs> not that many. It's actually not that many. 8,500. What? That's a lot. 8,580? Working in the temple. They didn't all work the same time. They they that wasn't their only job. They they worked for like two weeks a year. So they had a nice rotation there. Okay. So then it states in verse 49, oh no, no, verse 49, they were counted by the word of Hashem, beyond Moshe, so each one for his. Service and carrying upkudav asher tziva Moshe Hashem es Moshe. Upkudav asher tziva Hashem es Moshe. And they counted like God had commanded Moshe. What does that mean? That phrase, right? She says, O son of Pekudim, are you the mitzvah being ben shloshim shana va ben chamishim shana? That only the ones who were counted were only those who were in the mitzvah, i.e., from 30 to 50 years old. They didn't count anybody who was too young or too old. Okay, so now we have who we have to kick out of the camp. We've just talked about the formations of the camp. We've talked about the different tribes and then the formation of the Levites in the middle and that, and also the job of Levites to carry. There are three camps. We've just seen this in Rashi, the camp of the Mishkan itself the camp of the Levites around the Mishkan and the camp of the Israelites, which was around the Levites. But now we say, Here's the people who have no, they can't stay in the camp. Who's not allowed to stay in the camp? Anybody with Tsarua, they have what's called Saras, a biblical, a biblical spiritual disease. We call Zav. Zav is a male who has this emission from his body. We call Tamil and Nefesh, and anybody who has come in contact with a dead body. Rashi tells us, this, this passage was taught actually on the day the Mishkan was built, which is going back to the first day of Exodus. And even though the Parshas Bamidbar begins, begins, on the second day of ER, I mean, on the first day of the second month, which is ER, nevertheless, it's repeated, and there were eight passages that were said on that day. She says that there were seven other passages stated of that day, um, none of them which are are listed on the day of the Mishkan was built. And and we're going to get to that, God willing, in our Daf Yomi in less than 50 days, because tonight we're doing 14, and it's on Gitin 60. Can't wait. So now Rashi is going to say what I just said, and the only reason why I said it is because I have learned this Rashi. There were three camps. When they when they were there, let me just read this. Rashi, Bishas Chani Jerry, you had a question. Uh, yes, uh, since uh, uh, when the Jews camped in the desert, there was no eruv uh, uh, around the camp. So when it says these people have to go outside the camp, how many? Uh, what kind of a boundary surrounds the camp? 
And how many feet away from that boundary must these um, people who have been um, shoved out of the camp uh, uh, of the campsite? How far away must they? Uh, it's a very good question. Let's read this, Rashi, and then we'll come back to address your question if we have time. Uh, okay. It's a very, very good question. And then let's see if this Rashi addresses that. There were three camps. When they encamped, Tocha Koyim, within the curtains of the temples, the, temp, the courtyard of the Mishkan, that's the divine camp. Then the Levites camped around that, as it states in Parshas Bamidbar. And he machane levia umisham vat sof machane de goim from there to the end of the camps of the tribal divisions, i.e., to the end of their flags, makol arba ruchos in all four directions. He machane Israel. So the last place of the Israelites, that's the end of it. They didn't. It sounds like they did not have a physical boundary, but the last place of there, they had to be beyond it. To answer your question, it doesn't seem like there's a physical boundary, but they had to be behind that. And Hatsarua, the person who had leprosy, Nishtalech Chutz he was sent out beyond all the camps. He had to be beyond all the flags. Hazav, somebody who has this, this male who has this mission, Mutar B'machane Yisrael, Umeshuach Menashtayim. He's allowed to be in the third camp, the Israelite camp, but he's not allowed to be, <coughs> but he's not allowed to be in the Machane Shtina, and the machine levia, the tummy or nefesh, and somebody who's tummy from a dead body, mutar af b'shel levia, he's allowed to be even in the levitical camp. Meino mishulach al mishal shchina, and he's only sent out of the divine camp. Because the darshu rabbi sinim in the mikros, but masachas pesachim, rabbi zoyin is in tract de pesachim. But we also learn from here a powerful idea, which is this relates to Jerusalem. And also today. So what's the parallel, the rabbis tell us, what's the parallel to today's uh, modern Jerusalem? What is the parallel to the Machanesh Shechina, the divine camp? What? The Beit HaMikdash, the place of the Beit HaMikdash itself is parallel to the, to the Machanesh Shechina. What's the parallel to the Machanesh Shechina? That is the Temple Mount. And what's the parallel to the Machane Yisrael to the Yisrael camp. Eretz Yisrael. No, that's the city of Jerusalem. And so, therefore, are you allowed to go on the Temple Mount today? So, you're not allowed to go on the Temple Mount unless you've been purified from the Tumah that comes out of your body. So, the Tumah that's excreted from a man's body and the Tumah that's excreted from a woman's body. So, it, how do you purify yourself from that? You go to the mikvah. And then you can go on the Temple Mount. Can you go into the place where the base of Mikdash was? No, because there you have to be purified from the Tumah of touching a dead body. And the only way you could be purified from the Tumah of touching a dead body is by the ashes of the red heifer. So that's why you could, you're allowed halachically to go on the Temple Mount as long as you've gone to the Mikvah. A man or a woman who's gone to the Mikvah can go to the Temple Mount. But there's other questions. A woman is not supposed to go to the Mikvah to be purified from the Tumah that comes out of her body unless unless she's going to be with her husband. So therefore, it became a custom that the only time women go on the Temple Mount uh, is when, they, when they've when they gone to the mikvah to, to, before they go to the chuppah, before they get married, because they haven't been with their husband yet, but they've gone to the mikvah, so they've been purified. Single women. Because generally speaking, single women don't go to the mikvah. The rabbis don't encourage that because that creates all sorts of other concerns. Uh, what, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, I didn't understand about the uh, the uh, purification.